All right, we uh, wanted to get in touch with Justine uh, Laurie. She's a CPA here in Gloucester to tell us about the latest developments in the SBA loans. Hi, Justine. Hi. Um, I wish I was here with some good, exciting news like I was excited about last week, but um, yeah, it's kind of a bummer. Um, I haven't seen anything officially, officially official, but um, I did find information listed on a senator's website, which I would say is it's better than a news article, you know. Um, but essentially, rather than being a kind of flat $10,000 across the board grant for any business that applies, um, the EIDL um, advanced grant portion um, of these relief funds is now based on the number of employees you have. Um, so it's looking like it's going to be about $1,000 per employee. Um, I don't know how that's going to shake out for the sole proprietor that doesn't have employees. I would assume maybe they'll count you as one and send you $1,000. Um, I don't know. Very different $10,000. Yeah, and um, the bummer is that no, nobody knew. We were all on the same page of you know, thinking that this was how it was going to work. Um, I'm part of this big group of CPAs um, there's maybe about 100 of us in the group, maybe like 40 that are pretty active, all like really smart, well-informed people. And we were all blindsided by this. Well, Justine, my first question off the top is, is it legal to change this like this, like this presto change-o? Um, I don't know. So, have that answer, but I mean, I mean it, imagine. I mean, so the verbiage on the application said up to 10,000. The, this um, is the CARES right. application, the application or the EIDL um, loan application that lets you opt in for that grant. It did okay. say up to, but then every other publication that was shared and interpreted. I mean, like with this group of CPAs, we're people that we interpret tax code. That's what we do. Um, so like everybody, it, it wasn't like. Um, I don't know. Everyone was just really blindsided, basically, by, and really upset. Um, How did you learn about these changes? Honestly, um, I was Googling last night, wondering if, um, because we keep on checking in in this group, you know, seeing, to see if um, anyone has received funds, if any clients have received funds yet. Um, and initially, it was supposed to be within three days. So um, some people, you know, people that applied on Monday should have seen it Thursday, maybe Friday, um, and no one had seen anything yet. Uh, so I was Googling and I came across this um, thread on Reddit uh, and it was a bunch of small business owners complaining about it. And then someone linked that, um, that Senate publication that I um, sent you guys earlier about um, the change that essentially it was overwhelming, of course, because everybody's hurting right now. Why would, why would it not be overwhelming? Right. Um, but overwhelming response from people applying and there's just not enough to go around. From what I understood, and I just followed this after uh, Corey alerted me that we were going to talk, and mm -hmm. I really just looked at Twitter, but it looked <laughs> like the changes were coming from the Small Business Administration, that they were actually trying to change what the CARES Act had provided. So that's what the rumblings are that I've heard as well. Um, which, uh, do they have the authority to do that? I don't know. Uh, because then in, in the same Reddit, not that Reddit is a, you know, valid information source, but, you know, there's a bunch of anecdotal information in there. And people were saying that they had called SBA and SBA actually told them the same. Well, um, so here's a question. Mm -hmm. um, what if you're a sole proprietor who doesn't take a paycheck? I, I don't uh, know. Employment? My, my, well, yeah, unemployment, which I guess um, is still not live yet. Mm -hmm. or um, 1099 or sole proprietors. Um, I would assume that the sole proprietor could probably, I would hope that they will consider you as one employee. Right. Um, because for the purposes of the PPP loan, they're looking at your net earnings, um, or at least that's what they're saying. But again, that could change because that application won't be out until the 10th. Um, but as they're looking at your net earnings as payroll, I would assume that for those same purposes, they would at least consider the sole proprietor being one employee. So a thousand dollars, but I mean, that's a far cry for, from 10 grand. 
Um, I know a lot of people felt like that was their life preserver that it was being thrown out to them. And right, right. Now it's kind of being yanked away. So, and you had deliberately pointed certain a certain number of your clients at this loan because it seemed to work for them better, right? Yeah. So um, I had this big elaborate spreadsheet where I entered in everybody's information of their um, their employees, how much they made, and ran a scenario as to what would net the better um, the better option for them. And um, in some cases, if someone just doesn't have a huge payroll, um, then this was better. Right. Um, there is another option out there that might be good for people. It's the um, employee retention credit. Um, and what that is, is um, once, you're, um, once you have people back on payroll, back open for businesses, specifically for businesses that were shut down during this. So, um, you know, the hair and nail salons, the restaurants, anyone else who was, had a forced closure, um, they, once they reopen again, there is a credit. Um, it will happen on your as part of your quarterly payroll returns, and it is um, up to the first ten thousand dollars per employee um, per, per their um, per employee earnings. You'll get a fifty percent credit, so essentially up to five thousand dollars per employee, and that's refundable. So that could be really good for people who, um, you know, if we're back for business, it'll be a lot better if we're back open for business in May. Uh, but even for those people that are, you know, back open in June, um, that could work as well. Um, so there are still some other options out there. Um, but I had run some scenarios and for a lot of people, this 10 grand was really kind of just what they needed. Right. Uh, and it was easy. Um, I know, you know, I've talked to some of the loan officers over at Bank Gloucester and at Cape and Savings, and they're all so overwhelmed right now because they're being flooded with these PPP applications. Um, and so it would have been nice to have to be able to circumvent that whole process. Uh, I mean, it would be good for our banks because they'll get a funding fee from the SBA, but it's just it's a lot. Mm. Well, I imagine we'll be in touch with you a lot more often, Justine. You know, these are, things are changing on a dime like they are now. You know, who knows what uh, what tonight brings? Uh, I just hope that the next time we talk, I have some awesome, great news, and well, not this. <laughs> <laughs> I'm teasing, but we appreciate your time, and we'll be in touch. And uh, sure. thanks for talking to us today. Sure. Thanks, guys. Bye bye. Bye. bye.